Hello and welcome to another episode of Our Own Devices. Uh, we, you know, we have this promise that we are going to tell you something new every time, and we are going to, you know, tell you something really new this time because we have somebody who is joining us fresh out of a launch. I'm going to talk about the new Pixel phones, or to be more precise, we're going to talk about how AI is coming into the new Pixel phones. AI itself is not something really new for Pixel, and in fact. you can say ai was you know um, pioneered on devices by pixel and now they are taking it to a whole new level so we'll talk about that with sonia jovan putra who is the director of product management at google sonia welcome to the show thank you nagbog thanks for having me and thanks for talking about our wonderful new devices we're super excited about the three devices we've launched here in india today and it's great to be chatting with you today So Sonia just for our listeners can you can you, uh, you know can you start by telling us what's new in the new Pixel phones and I, yeah. I know it's not just about the camera Yeah no absolutely there is so much new to talk about in both of the devices um so we've launched Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro um when we think about Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro we've really you know significantly improved the design the hardware and the software with this generation of devices it's a step function improvement across all three areas starting with the design you will see notice that the design is a lot more smoother a lot more sleeker of a design this time around and what's inside those beautiful designs are our brand new displays we're super excited about these new displays cuz they are amazing starting with the display in pixel 8 our actua display it's a 6.2 inch display that um really gives you ultra realistic um representation of what you're looking at be it a video or if you're playing a game or whatever it is that you're you're consuming on your display we step that up a level with our Pixel 8 Pro display which is our super actua display. It's a 6.7 inch display that supports 1 through 120 variable rate refresh which gives you a little bit of extra efficiency out of that display. It is our brightest display that we've ever shipped and one of the most beautiful displays we've ever shipped. Now, aside from the displays, you hit the nail on the head with the cameras. We've upgraded the camera system on both devices through and through. Um let's start again with the Pixel 8. With the Pixel 8, we've introduced a new main 50 megapixel sensor. Um that's the same sensor that's actually on our Pro device as well. So you're getting a pro level premium camera sensor in both the 8 and the 8 Pro. on the ultra wide we've added auto focus which means we can now support macro focus on our pixel 8 device which is super exciting for the first time bringing that feature on the pro device we also have upgraded both the tele and the ultra wide the tele is now a 48 megapixel uh sensor with increased sensitivity and the 48 is also uh, sorry the ultra wide is also a 48 megapixel um sensor with increased sensitivity but even more special about that ultra wide and now it lets you do macro focus down to 2 cm which gives wow. you these beautiful beautiful images that you couldn't take in the past um now that's the camera and that's the display but the devices themselves have gotten a major upgrade from an experience standpoint thanks to the brand new Google Tensor G3 processor that's powering both of these devices the, the G3 processor it's an upgrade through and through where every block on that processor has been upgraded from the V9 ARM architecture through the DSP the ISP um every area has been improved to enable our new set of features that we have in our software and of course you have artificial intelligence in these devices right and and again ai for google pixel devices not new and it's way beyond like you know uh, you know uh, the camera figuring out that hey you're trying to maybe click a portrait you guys have been doing like magic eraser and all sorts of things so so on the ai front what is happening this time like you know and and what are the kind of use cases or new use cases that you're seeing with uh, the new pixel devices 
Yeah, so we've been using AI for a numerous number of features across our devices. And it's really about enabling useful, helpful, unique features that allow our users to be better versions of themselves, right? Enabling them to do things quicker, enabling them to do things better. That's what it's all about. It goes back to who's the user, What's the use case that we're trying to solve? And AI is just another one of the tools in our set of tools that enable us to solve these problems for our users. And so when we think about our Pixel devices um, and where we've integrated AI, it's really through and through. Um, let's talk about like messages, a really simple app but we have generative AI running in that app to enable you to proofread your device, proofread your messages, fix your messages for you, making sure you always are coherent and you're not, you know, not sending out typos. So it's really awesome that in this like innocuous application, as, as we would see, because messages have existed for as long as smartphones have existed, we've been able to find a way to use the tool of AI to make sure that you as a user are able to send awesome messages every single time. We also have AI running in a lot of our speech capabilities, enabling us to translate, enabling us to talk more naturally with some of our speech tools. Um, and then once again, of course, we're using AI and generative AI throughout our camera experiences, really pushing the envelope on computational photography and ensuring that you as a user are able to get the exact type of shot that you want. So it is interesting that, uh, you know, you mentioned AI as one of the features, you know, is it, is it come to a point where, you know, especially a company like Google that's doing, that's at the forefront of the AI development and happening at a time when, you know, AI itself has has sort of, you know, uh, had this, you know, exponential growth in the past year with so many use cases, so many new products. Do you think it's come to a point where you can say that we have a phone, uh, which is primarily an AI phone? You know, do you think it's it's coming to that? Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting question. We absolutely build our phone to make sure that we're able to run AI models on the device from the silicon all the way through the device structure. And then our features take advantage of those tools. Um, and I do think Pixel in general is absolutely well positioned to be at the forefront of artificial intelligence and leveraging it to build experiences that are helpful for our users. So as you build your new device or as you just built your new device, did you, you know, is AI something that's that's always in the back of the mind? Hey, like with the camera, I have to enable these kind of use cases. And especially with the processor like the Tensor, you have the capability to do it, do it on device also. So is that is that always a part of the discussion when you are looking at it from a larger design perspective of how you do it, how you design the features, how you design the phone itself? So do you keep AI at the back of the mind always? I think it's kind of almost the flip of what you're saying. Where we start is always with the user. Now, this is not okay. a Pixel philosophy, but this is a Google philosophy. Mm -hmm. You always start with the user and the user pain point or the user problem, and then you work your way from there to figure out what is the best solution to resolve that pain point for our users. Yeah, yeah. Now, AI is a super powerful tool that we're able to take advantage of to solve hard problems that our users have been facing for a really long time. Let's take a fun example, right? Best take. Now, we've been taking group photos for a long time and we sit there now that we can take digital photos, you know, we sit there and we take six or seven shots because it's like, well, we're hoping one of those is perfect. Well, now with AI on device, we're able to make sure when you take those six shots, we're able to fuse those six images together, make sure, making sure that you have the perfect shot. But it wasn't that we wanted to figure out where to use the AI. It's that we identified a problem that people want a picture where everybody mm -hmm. looks their best. And the best solution to that problem was using AI on device to solve it. You know, when we think about night sight and video, Low light video is another problem where, you know, we've been struggling with that problem. It's a problem we've wanted to solve for a very long time. Here, the, the solution was using AI, but using it across our on-device models, as well as then using cloud-based models to then further boost the video and improve that low light performance and bring it back down to your device. So it's not about how can we use the technology, it's about what is the user problem? 
And what's the best solution for that problem? And AI just happens to be a really powerful tool that we're able to take advantage of, especially given our relationship with DeepMind within Google, which does a lot of this amazing research in this space. And, you know, has been in this space for longer than I can, like probably longer than we've been in Pixel. Um, yeah. And so they're really on the forefront of some of these amazing artificial intelligent models. And, and so leveraging that relationship to build the capabilities into our silicon in our devices, and then taking advantage of our cloud computing capabilities to go even further. It is interesting that you said this because just last week I had the Canva founder tell me that I don't have users who come in with the mindset that I have to use AI today. They come in to solve a problem. And that's exactly what you are saying. But, but then you have problems which have really not been solved completely on the smartphone. Like let's say about battery life, right? Can AI help there? Can AI figure out that, hey, you know, the user has gone into a mode where he doesn't need a lot of battery. Can I just dump things down? Can I put, you know, boost it up? So, so are there those kind of AI innovative stuff happening under the hood, which people are not really realizing as they would with the camera? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we're just starting to dig into the capabilities of what, like how far we can go with AI. And I think you're absolutely right. There is a lot of problems that are still available for us to resolve on devices and a lot of problems that our users still have that we can provide helpful experiences for. And so we strive to continue to kind of figure out what are some of the key pain points, the ones that are most acute for our users and try to find new and you know, unique solutions to those problems, including things like battery life. So with a lot of things, you, you mentioned how like you have assistance as you are, you are maybe sending a reply to a message. And I'm sure like, you know, these are similar to the features we get on Google uh, right now. Uh, you know, you know, when you're replying on a mail, you know, you have almost like a co-pilot kind of a thing, which assists, assists you. So is it the same product or do you have to think of these products very differently when it comes to a smartphone? Or can you just use the same backend and just show it on a different front end? Yeah, it really depends. Um, our objective is to, to make things fast, efficient, and secure. And in that vein, we do try to run things on device. So we're not necessarily leveraging the same models that you're using maybe when you're on your laptop or connected to our, our in-cloud services. Um, so specifically, I was talking about Proofread. And Proofread is running on device. Um, with and, and so that's a different model than if you were in your Gmail app you know, doing autocomplete or using some of our really new tools that we have in Gmail that we talked about at IO that really helps you frame a whole message. Has it come to a point where hardware itself or maybe the megapixels you put in a camera or, um, or the other features that you have on device is not that important because, you know, all the gaps can be filled by you know ai because i'll give you an example like you know i had this you know an actual experience where you know i dropped something while i was at a movie theater i used the pixel i shot i, I clicked the picture out of the seat with the pixel which gave me a very clear view of what's happening in the darkness <laughs> like you know so so yeah but it just needs those small signals from which the rest of it it can sort of extrapolate and tell you what it is so do you think it's come to a point where the hardware or the smartphone it's almost like a zero client kind of thing and it just uses the power of ai maybe online, to do everything a user would expect it to do? Um, I don't think we're at that point yet. Um, and, and who knows if we, we will ever get there. Because when, when we look at our devices, you know, we have multiple tiers of devices with multiple tiers of hardware. And that's because there are differences in the raw signals that you're getting. When we talk about that brand new 50 megapixel camera that we've just introduced as our main sensor, that additional 21% of sensitivity it's getting us more information. And with more information, we're able to produce a higher quality output, even if it's going through you know, our multiple ML or AI models to create that output. When you start with good quality, you end with good quality, just like if you're baking a cake. If you start with quality ingredients, you get a better output. And so I think it is important what the hardware is that, that you're using um, so that you can you know, start at the right point and then all of these AI models and these ML models, they only let you get better. So I'm not going to ask you an, another AI question, but but on the product side, as as a, as a person who's handling a product of, of a, a very important product, 
are there things that you want to put there on device, but you no, know, you know the technology is maybe not there yet. There are pain points you want to solve, but yeah, you're saying maybe you know, yeah, maybe with the Pixel Nine, not with the Pixel Eight. You know, because you know, you know, you know, you are not there yet. Is that something that keeps happening every year? Um, I think at this point, um, in the development, generative AI is is very new, and the models are are very large and very complex. Um, and the compute needed to process these models is beyond what's possible on a, on a smartphone today. Um, I think for us as Google and as Pixel, we're, you know, we're blessed that we have the opportunity both to leverage our tenant that's on device as well as our cloud compute and use that hybrid model of the two to really give you amazing features like video boost, where you know we're we're setting a bunch of about 400 different meta tags on device, then sending up the file and leveraging video HDR and other capabilities in the cloud to create the best smartphone videos you've ever seen. That that limitation today is because you can only do so much on a smartphone, and I think. As, as we progress in the world of Gen AI, it'll be interesting to see how those models change, um, how efficient they're able to get, and then how, how, how we're able to improve the silicon that we have in our devices, improve the thermal dissipation or the thermal mitigation capabilities of these devices so we can run these larger models, maybe even locally. Um, and so there's a lot of interesting things happening right now in this space. And so looking forward to seeing what else we can do. And one last thing, if I can ask you, Sonia, is like in a market like India, you have very specific problems and a lot of them have improved over the years, but you still have problems. You have you have problems which are maybe not really technology driven, but also problems like, you know, language, right? You know, you, you know your next set of users maybe need to access the content in languages that they are familiar with. Have, you know, you have run out of people who understand English. So how do you, uh, you know, how are you trying to solve these problems, especially with the Pixel 8 series? Yeah, it's, you know, we're always trying to expand our inclusivity, right? This is across the board and, you know, inclusion and building features for inclusion from multiple types of, of different populations is super important. And you're absolutely right. Language is part of that. The way we communicate and what languages we are most comfortable communicating in. So we're constantly looking at opportunities to expand the languages, expand our feature sets that are available here in India um, to support the population here. And I think it's super important because you know we're not all the same, and so it's important that we're building features that work for where people are at. Yeah. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you for being on the show. Very insightful, and uh, you know, hopefully. You know, AI is going to supercharge the uh, the Pixel series in the coming years too. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. It was lovely talking to you today. You were listening to Our Own Devices. We'll be back again next week with another guest, more insight. And till then, we are available everywhere. Listen to your pods.